Okay, so I get asked this quite a lot by my clients, so I thought I'd do a quick video taking you through everything that you need to know about how to prepare your songs for mastering. Here it comes. Number one, which format should you provide it in? Now the answer to that is very simple. What format did you record it in? Whatever you recorded it in, that is a format that you need to provide it in. So lots of people record in 44.1K or 48K 24-bit. That's probably a standard that lots of people use. You might record at a higher sample rate like 96K or even 192, that's totally fine as well. If you do that, then just make sure that you provide it in that format. Provide it in a format that you recorded it in in the first place. If you did it at 44.1 and 16 bit, then leave it at that. Don't bounce it to a higher bit rate and don't bounce it to a higher sample rate. If you're converting from 16 bits to 24 bits, you're just adding another eight bits of zero. You're not increasing the dynamic range, which is what the bit rate is. That, that is dynamic range. You're not increasing the dynamic range. You're just making a file size bigger. And the same goes for the sample rate. If you did it at 48K and you're deciding to now sample it at 96K, it's not gonna be any more detailed. It's not gonna make that acoustic guitar that you recorded sound more detailed than it was in the first place. So just provide it in a format that you recorded in. Number two, should I leave bus processing on? Now I'm gonna answer that with another question. Were you mixing with bus processing on? If so, yes, leave it on. Remember when you were doing that mix, if you had the bus processing on, then that processing was informing the decisions that you were making when you were doing the mix. So if you take all that bus processing off, it's gonna change your mix, especially if you've got EQ and compression, compression especially, it's really gonna change your mix. So when you send that to the mastering engineer, you're gonna be starting from a, a different mix than what you're used to hearing. So it's gonna come back completely different already. But what you shouldn't do is if you didn't have any bus processing in the first place, don't add that at the end. Don't add any more, just leave it as it is because in the same respect, that is your mix. That is what you understand your mix to be. So don't change it after that because it's just gonna get confusing. But what if you like to mix with a limiter on? Lots of people like to do that. I sometimes do that as well because when you have a limiter on there, it means that when you're doing the mix, you get a bit more of an idea of what it's gonna sound like when it's mastered. Especially things like snares, when a snare goes into a limiter, that can change the sound of it, it can change the tone, it can change the level of it. And when it gets to the mastering stage, you don't want things to go too in a different direction that sounds completely different. So that is fine if you do mix with a limiter on, but what I would suggest is always take that limiter off, so out, out of all the bus process, and take the limiter off before you send it to the mastering engineer. That way that it gives them a little bit more scope and it allows them to do their job and to make some more informed and experienced decisions on how much limiting is required. Number three, how much headroom should I leave? Now, back in the day, a nice amount of headroom was always appreciated, at least three to six dB, because it allows the Martian engineer to be able to do their job, to get more level and to just have a little bit more space to work with. It's a little bit different now with the introduction of 32-bit and 64-bit float in a DAW. That basically means that the, the Martian engineer will be able to turn your mix down and it's not gonna have any detrimental effect to your mix. So don't worry too much about leaving too much headroom. I mean, it's still good practice to, to leave a little bit at the top. As I said, three to six dB is very, very nice. Even three dB, that's often the most of what I get when I get given things. So it's nice to have a little bit there, but don't worry too much if you can't. But that brings me directly to my next point, number four, what if it's clipping? Okay, that is a different story. If your mix is clipping, if you're really smashing the mix bus and you're actually getting distortion on the output, there's only so much a master engineer can do with that. Yes, there are some magical plugins like Isotope Hopes RX and it can deal with, with a, a great deal of clipping. It can do some magic to files which are less than perfect. However, you don't really want that on, on your mix. You don't really want to be dealing with that in mastering. So if your mix is clipping, then bring it down. Go back to all the other tracks, go back to all your buses and then just bring them down. Make sure it is not clipping the mix bus because the clipping is gonna definitely create limitations in a mastering. Number five, 
Should I provide stems? If you're not sure what stems are, stems are basically stereo bounces of certain elements of the song. So you'll have like a stereo bounce of the drums, a stereo bounce of all the vocals, stereo bounce of all the guitars, things like that. Now the short answer for standard mastering is no. Just provide a stereo file. That is what standard mastering is. They are mastering a stereo bounce of your mix. Now, unless you have agreed this with your mastering engineer and they want some additional stems, then of course provide some stems. But just bear in mind that if that's the route you're going, then now you're turning into stem mastering, which is a bigger job. It takes more time, so therefore can cost more money. So that will be something to talk to your mastering engineer about. But most of the time, if it's just standard mastering, just a stereo file is required. Number six, should I provide references? Yeah, sure. Why not? This all comes back to having a conversation with your mastering engineer and just making sure you're on the same page. Now, most of the time, a decent mastering engineer is going to listen to the type of music and is going to essentially master accordingly. So if you're sending them classical music, they're going to master it very different to if you're sending them EDM music. EDM is going to be slamming. Classical is going to have much more dynamic range. But you might have some requirements. You might feel that you're providing a, a rock mix and and you do specifically want it to be pumping that much more. You might want the mix to be, or rather the master, to be slammed a little bit more and just really be turning that WAV file into a sausage. That might be what you want to go for. And that's totally fine. But just make that clear. Let the Martian engineer know. And yes, provide some references of masters that you really like. All of this helps the Martian engineer to get the right result for you. If you are finding this video useful, please do me a favor, help me out. Hit the old like and subscribe. It really does help the channel out a lot. Also, if you want some free stuff, sign up to the mailing list below. I will send you an EQ cheat sheet and also some one shots that you can use in your mixes. So well, that's all for free. So you, it's a no brainer really, isn't it? Okay, it's currently. Number seven, is mastering different for CD, streaming and vinyl? The answer is yes, actually. So we'll start with vinyl. Vinyl can be the most different to, to the three. There are certain requirements that are necessary when mastering to vinyl, a lot to do with the, the amount of low end that can be left in and lots of other little things. So I would say if you are really trying to get your tracks mastered with vinyl, speak to a master engineer who is experienced with doing that and ideally is a specialist in it because then you're going to get the best results. Now, as for CD and streaming, those two are a little bit more similar. Now, sometimes some people will get a different master for CD and a different for streaming. That'll be something to talk to your master engineer about as well because partly it will de it'll depend on the music. But a lot of the time, a lot of the time these days, it tends to be the same master. Yes, technically, you shouldn't go as loud on a master for streaming as you can on CD. But what tends to happen these days is people often find a happy medium between the two and just use the same master. Now, the other thing to consider if you're getting it mastered specifically for CD is how you're going to get that distributed. If you're going to be using a CD duplication place, then they're going to require a DDP master, which is basically a red book standard, which is recognized by all of the different places and will mean that your CD is replicated in exactly the way you want it to be. Now, for any Martian engineer, this isn't difficult to do. It's just something that takes a little bit more time and therefore it can cost just a small fee for that additional time occurred. So just make sure that if it is specifically for CD, you're getting your track mastered, then talk to your Martian engineer about that so everything is clear from the beginning. Number eight. What about embedding ISRC codes? Yep, that's something that your mastering engineer can do as well. If you have your own codes, whether that be from your label or if it's something that you've generated yourself, then you need to let your mastering engineer know, forward those onto them, and then they can embed those into the masters. That just helps the monetization of the tracks to make sure that when those specific masters get a spin, then that gets chalked up into the magical world and you know you get paid. But don't worry if you don't have your own ISRC codes. A lot of people don't worry too much about it, especially if you're using a digital distributor like DistroKid, CD Baby, or any of, any of those favorites. They will generate it for you when you upload the tracks. So when you've got your master back and you're uploading that that to whatever provider you're using, that's when the generation will take place. So if you don't have a label or you just don't have specific codes that you require using, then you won't need to provide that for the mastering engineer. 
And that's basically it. I hope I've covered pretty much everything that you need to know, but do let me know if there's anything else that you're not sure about. So just to summarize, the main thing for standard mastering is make sure that you provide the tracks in the recording format that you recorded it in. The standard is generally gonna be 44.1K or 48K, 24 bit, but any format is accepted. Just make sure that you don't bounce it at a higher bit rate or sample rate than you recorded it in the first place. If you're not sure about anything, ask the mastering engineer first, and they'll be able to help you with anything you need. Um, but in the meantime, if you've got any questions for me, feel free to just leave them in the comments and I'll try my best to get back to you as soon as I can. But otherwise, thanks very much for watching. See you next time.